Welcome. I am reading pages 241 to 259. I hope everyone is following along with us on the one and only Ivan. Uh, my chapter says poking and prodding. The lady comes again and she brings an animal doctor with an awful smell and a dangerous looking bag. He spends an hour with Ruby poking and prodding. He looks at her eyes, her feet, her trunk. When he's done with Ruby, he enters my cage. I wish I could hide under not tag like Bob. Instead, I do a nice loud chest beat and after a moment, the doctor retreats. We're going to need to put this one under, he says. I'm not quite sure what he means, but I strut around my cage, feeling victorious anyway. No one asked me to paint today and no one asked Ruby to perform. There are no shows, no visitors, unless you count the protesters. And Max stays in his office all day. I wake up from a long morning nap and Bob is on my belly, but he isn't sleeping. He's watching the ring where four men are placing a large metal box. It's me sized. What's that? I ask, still blurry from sleep. Bob nuzzles my chin. I believe that box is for you, my friend. I'm not sure what he means. Me? They brought a bunch of boxes while you were sleeping. Looks to me like they're taking this whole lot of you, he says casually, licking a paw. Even Thelma. Taking, I repeat, taking us where? Well, some to the zoo, probably. Others to an animal shelter where humans will try to find them homes. <clears throat> Bob shakes himself. So I guess all good things must come to an end, huh? His voice is bright, but his eyes are far away and sad. I'm going to miss your stomach, big guy. Bob shuts his eyes and he makes an odd noise in his throat. But what about you, I asked. I can't tell if Bob is just pretending to sleep, but he doesn't answer. I gaze at the huge shadowy box and suddenly I understand how Ruby feels. I don't want to go into that box. The last time I was in a box, my sister died. When George and Julia come that night, George doesn't get his mop or his broom. He gathers up his tools and his belongings while Julia runs to my cage. This is my last night, Ivan, she says, and she presses her palm to my glass. Mac fired my dad. Tears slip down her cheeks, but the zoo lady said maybe they'll have an opening there in a while, cleaning cages and stuff. I walk to the glass that separates us and I put my hand where Julia's is, palm to palm, finger to finger. My hand is bigger, but they're not so very different. I'm going to miss you, Julia said, and Ruby and Bob. But this is a good thing, really it is. You deserve a different life. I stare into her dark eyes and I wish I had words for her. Sniffling, she goes to Ruby's cage. Have a good life, Ruby, she says. Ruby makes a little rumbling noise. She puts her trunk between the bars and touches Julia's shoulder. Where's Bob anyways, Julia asks. She looks around under cages, under tables, and by the trash can. Dad, she calls. Have you seen Bob? Bob? Nope, George says. Julia's brows wrinkle. What happened to him, Dad? What if Max shuts down the whole mall? He says he's going to try to keep it open without the animal, George says. He stuffs his hand in his pockets. I'm worried about Bob, too, but he is a survivor. You know what, Dad, Julia said with a gleam in her eyes? Bob could live with us. Mom loves dogs, and he could keep her company, and... Jules, I'm not even sure I have a job yet. I might not even be able to feed you, let alone some mutt. But my dog walking money. Sorry, Jules. Julia nods. I understand. She starts to leave, then runs back to my cage. I almost forgot. This is for you, Ivan. She slips a piece of paper in my cage. It's a drawing of Ruby and me. We were eating yogurt raisins, and Ruby is playing with another baby elephant, and I'm holding hands with a lovely gorilla. She has red lips and a flower in her hair. I look as I always do at Julia's pictures, like an elegant fella, but something is different about this drawing. In this picture, I am smiling. The door to my cage is propped open and I can't stop staring at it. My door is open. The giant box has been moved and it is open too. The humans have pushed it up against my doorway. If I walk through my door, 
I enter the box. The zoo lady, whose name is Maya, is here. Click. Yogurt raisin, tiny marshmallow, apple slice, papaya. Hour after hour, keep on putting things into my cage. I look over at Ruby and she waits to see what I will do. I touch the box. I sniff the dark interior where there is a ripe mango. Click, click. I have to do it. Ruby is watching me from between the bars of her cage. And this box is the way out. I step inside. After I leave the box and step inside my cage, I get an idea, a good one. I tell Bob he can sneak into my box with me and live at the zoo. Have you forgotten? I'm a wild beast, Ivan, he says, sniffing the floor for crumbs. I am untamed, undaunted. Bob samples a piece of the salary and spits it out. Besides, they would notice. Humans are dumb, but they're not that dumb. Ivan, Ruby says, do you think the other elephants will like me? I think they'll love you, Ruby. You'll be a big part of their family. Do you think the other gorillas will like you, Ruby asks? I'm a silverback, Ruby, a leader. I pull back my shoulders and hold my head high. They don't have to like me. They just have to respect me. Even as I tell her this, I wonder if I can ever command the respect. I haven't had much practice being a real gorilla, much less a silverback. Do you think the other elephants will know any of my jokes? If they don't, I tell her, you can teach them. Ruby flaps her ears. She flicks her tail. You know what, Ivan? What, I ask. I think I'm going to go in the box tomorrow. I gaze at her fondly. I think it's a good idea, and I think Stella would agree. Do you think the other elephants will know how to play tag? I love tag. Me too, I said, and I think of the nimble sister racing through the bushes, always just out of my reach. Late at night, Mac opens my cage. The full moon falls on his sagging shoulders. He seems much smaller now. Bob, instantly alert, leaps off my stomach and dives under knot tag. Don't bother hiding, dog, Mac says. I know you're in there. Mac settles onto my tire swing. Might as well stay one more night. Your buddy's leaving tomorrow. Tomorrow? My stomach drops. I'm not ready. I need more time. I haven't said my goodbyes. I haven't thought this through. Mac pulls a small photo out of his shirt pocket. It's me when I was young. Mac and I are in the front seat of his convertible and I'm wearing a baseball cap and eating an ice cream cone. I was a handsome lad, but I had to admit, I look ridiculous. Nothing like a real gorilla. We had some laughs, didn't we, guy, Mac says. Remember when we went on that roller coaster? Or that time I tried to teach you to play basketball? Max shakes his head, chuckling. You had a lousy jump shot. He stands, sighs, looks around, and puts the photo back in his pocket. I'm going to miss you, Ivan, he says. And then he leaves. He doesn't look back. Early in the morning, Maya arrives with many other humans. Some have white coats, some have rustling papers. They are hushed, busy, and determined. Ruby enters her box first. I'm scared, Ivan, she calls from inside the box. I don't want to leave you. A part of me doesn't want to leave her either, but I know I can't tell her that. Think of all the amazing stories you can share with your new family, I say. Ruby falls silent. I'll tell them your elephant jokes, she says after a long pause, the one about the refrigerator. I bet they'll like that. And be sure to tell them about Bob and Julia and I and Stella. I'll remember everyone, Ruby says, especially you. Before I say any more, they roll her cage out to a waiting truck. Then it's my turn. Bob is hiding in a corner behind my pool. The humans don't even notice him. While they're busy making sure my box is ready, Bob sneaks over. He licks my chin, just in case there are any leftovers. You, I whisper, are the one and only Bob. I reach for knot tag. She is in a limp rag without her stuffing 
and dribbles of paint are covering her fur. I hold her out to Bob and he tilts his head confused. This is to help you sleep, I say. Bob takes her in his teeth and slips away. Good, Ivan. Good boy, Maya says when I lumber into my box. I hear the clicker and I'm rewarded with a tiny marshmallow. When I'm settled, Maya gives me a sweet drink that tastes of mango and something kind of bitter. My eyelids grow heavy. I want to see what happens next, but I am sleepy, so sleepy. I dream I'm with Tag and we're swinging from vines while Stella watches. The sun slices through the thick ceiling of trees and the breeze tastes like fruit.